Okay, yeah, this is my first uh, JuliaCon. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, thanks for having me here. And um, so I'm uh, part of a, a lightning uh, research group that uses uh, lightning mapping array data. Uh, the lightning mapping array is uh, basically uh, a set of uh, uh, VHF receiver stations in a uh, region that then can be used to map in three dimensions uh, the lightning activity. So um, th it's really a, a team effort of, uh, of, of many because you need uh, quite uh, some uh, technical uh, things uh, to repair stations and to fill them. Uh, so this is like the, the equipment. It's actually quite simple. And uh, our uh, stations are nowadays uh, solar uh, powered. And uh, so what happens is uh, these radio sources are uh, mapped uh, by uh, GPS timing. Uh, and so you get uh, points in a 3D uh, space in a region of about uh, 250 kilometers radius. And uh, this is not the only uh, LMA. There is uh, uh, about, well, more than 15 light mapping arrays worldwide in operation. And they're typically used for uh, well, for the science and for uh, like uh, now casting and uh, warnings for uh, severe weather. So we're looking for like, uh, can lightning be used for um, uh, predicting also other types of severe weather like uh, tornadoes or uh, large hail. Uh, also, this kind of instrument is uh, used for uh, validation of uh, satellite instruments uh, like the GOES uh, geostationary lighting uh, mapper and the MeteorSat third generation lighting imager, which has just gone uh, online uh, this week. And I can already integrate them with my plots. And to the left here, here you see um, an old XLMA plot. So that's the original software that they gave with the LMA. But it intended to be very slow, and it was programmed in IDL. Um, so there have been other efforts. Like in 2011, I I made my own uh, program in, uh, in Scilab. I just like to get a hands-on with the data. And uh, this at the bottom right is a uh, visualization. So you see like a typical uh, map to the left, uh, bottom left. Uh, the, the top figure is a time altitude. So you see the individual lines are uh, individual flashes. And then you have some uh, side views. Um, there's also another effort going on uh, for Python. Um, but I did notice that on their GitHub page, they noted that uh, matplotlib, for example, is very slow, and they want to look for a solution which is faster. So I, and I once uh, I was in a chat with some colleagues from the US, and uh, they are used to mostly the software on the left of this screen. Uh, and they, um, when I demonstrated the the package, well, the yes, my new software. Um, yeah, they noted like, oh, this actually plots instantly. So this <laughs> is, a, this is a very good uh, thing of uh, of GL Mackey. So uh, why Julia? Okay, so um, I wanted to uh, develop further some ideas that I've presented at IUGG and uh, various uh, conferences in 2015, 2018, had some ideas about uh, leader speed, and I had some routines already developed, but it was very slow in, in Scilab, what I was using. Basically, Scilab is, is a sort of MATLAB, but free. Um, uh, I also wanted to integrate uh, geostationary lightning images, because it's becoming very important right now, and so you need net CDF reading, uh, and they come in very large data volumes. So. Uh, okay, I, I, I intend to make this uh, also a package for the Lightning community. Uh, maybe, well, say let's say within a year. I have to learn some things, and um, I have to round off this. Uh, so how does it look like, actually? Let's, let's visualize. Because here I made a, a movie because I don't uh, risk... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't risk running it in the, I mean, it will work, but, so here at the left you see, <laughs> but that you can always say, and then it crashes, and then you spend the rest of the talk debugging, so. So here there are several things, so at the left you see the map, uh, to the lower right you have a time distance plot, you see kind of the longer lighting flashes, 
the small one. Now I selected the flash by clicking on it. And uh, I can animate it. Um, like right now it's animating in, uh, in time. Uh, now I can select what I want to see on the color scale. So now it's plotting flash size. And it's still plotting by time in ordering. And now you can order, and I, I show leader speed. So this is one of the things that I, I, I programmed uh, from scratch. Um, so the leader speed is, uh, is fitting uh, a, a TLSEN uh, robust estimator through the sources. Um, and I use some trick to make it actually uh, work quite uh, fast. Uh, so let's, let's look at some other examples. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, these, these are things that I do on, in terms of the data processing. Um, so I make, uh, basically I make, uh, well, I'm used to C and IDL and I just make like, uh, as you see on top, uh, LMA type. That's like a, like a struct that you would have in C. And so I, I operate directly on this data. And um, so I read the native uh, zipped uh, ASCII files. Uh, I do, uh, well, a lot of gridding and noise filtering. And a lot of heavy lifting is done by dbscan from the clustering.jl uh, package. Uh, this is really, really cool because I didn't have access to this uh, before. So I, I, I chop the data uh, into flashes. Um, so there's a certain uh, 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 spatial and uh, temporal dimensions that uh, govern uh, uh, these different types. Like you have sparkles at the cloud top that uh, kind of persist, but in very narrow regions. And you can kind of highlight that with the DB scan. Uh, so this leader speed fitting that I just told you about, and um, from that you can determine the polarity and the charge structure of thunderstorms. Uh, so here is an uh, example of these sparkles. So you see these uh, little activity uh, stuff at the overshooting cloud tops, and you can isolate them with the DB scan. And here's an example of the leader speed uh, for a flash. So in 2013, I wrote a paper on uh, this kind of diagram, which is a time versus distance diagram. Uh, okay, <laughs> time's up. So uh, yeah, so you see the leader speed, and the leader speed basically indicates the, the, the polarity. So there's another tool that, uh, well, I could talk further, about, but uh, I guess you just have to come to me, and I will show you more uh, if you want uh, in real time. You can see planes in a lightning mapping array sometimes. Um, Performance, uh, Julia is eight times faster than what I was using before. <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, I should end with, oh, where's it going? Yeah, oh, we're here, okay. If you wanna see more uh, like real-time data, um, but this is like a, a standard Python plot that is like, uh, uh, so you go to this website and you see real-time, if we have lightning basically. So thank you very much. Very quick question. Yeah, there we go. I didn't know that lightning data was so good. Like it looks like you can almost like whatever you resolve is like I I always thought like you could say like oh maybe there's somewhere uh, lightning, but it's like right. you can really pin it down, right? Yeah. And so I was wondering, there was on this on the on the video that you showed, there was this like gap of like a little circle where nothing happened. Yeah, I happened. didn't even mention that, but that's, that's, so this is a super salt, uh -huh. which is like the type that produces large hail and it has a rotating updraft. And mm -hmm. really you can see a lightning hole, which is, well, the first time that we could see that after mm -hmm. we upgraded the, our, our LMA mm -hmm. in our region. How, how, how big is that, like a few The hole is, a, well, about eight kilometers wide, this okay. one. Yeah, cool, very cool, thanks. Cool, another round of applause, please. Thank you.